Guess who's back in the house? Happy Pride Month. The Beverly Center partnered with The Advocate Magazine and World of Wonder Productions to celebrate Pride at the Beverly Center on June 22nd from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Grand Court on Level 6. Carson Cressley of Queer Eye for the Straight hosted guy. a panel consisting of Bob the Drag Queen, Ginger Minge, Kim Chi, and Violet Tchotchke. Watch and enjoy. Oh my gosh, look at this! A standing ovation! Oh my goodness! That's why I never let them have seating at any of my events. Um, new influencers got lucky. Um, thank you so much for coming to the Beverly Center. Uh, I just wanted to personally thank the Beverly Center for hosting not just a day of pride, but a whole month of pride to celebrate our amazing, beautiful, vibrant, diverse, fun, fierce, and fabulous community. And I was like, we're the gays. We're not going to do pride just for one day. We put up bunting. I put up colored lights. No, it is going to be Pride Month. So thank you for being here to celebrate that with us. Um, I'm sitting in the middle right here, right? I think. So you guys, I know that you all are fans of RuPaul's Drag Race, right? Yes, oh, hello. Look at the people up in the peanut gallery. Hello. Um, so we have some amazing queens from the show. Um, we have. Thank you, I deserve it. Yes, she does. Next up, season seven, runner-up, the inimitable, Ginger Minge. Overhead lighting is good for drag. I love that, I feel beautiful. I feel like a thumb. So a green nice. thumb. A green thumb. Ow, so nice and bright. Okay, but wait, there's more. Oh, you can see everybody's behind me. I thought it was a surprise. Who's going to be here? This is crazy. <laughs> Next up, you'll never guess, it's Kim Chi, y'all. Remember your Furby? This is her now. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, make some noise for season seven winner, Violet Chachki. Yes, serving fashion Luke's. That's with an E and a W and a U. You okay? Are you warm? It's okay. My middle name is Sweaty. Is that a oh. reveal? Okay, just the no plot. There's no reveal. It's like, remember Teletubbies? This is the mail. <laughs> It's very pretty. All right, so we're going to dig in uh, because we're going to do the panel and then we're going to have some performances from all of the amazing queens that are on the stage here today. So that's going to be super fun. So I'm just going to dig right in. Um, Violet, I think you are um, known as a real fashion queen. <laughs> you can say that. I think so. And I think you really elevated the fashion game on your season in season seven. Um, Team. Who are some of your style icons and inspirations? Style icons and inspirations? Actually, you inspired me on Queer Eye a long time Stop ago. Stop it! Honey! Yeah. Talk about vintage throwbacks. Oh my god, is she saying I'm old? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But I appreciate Thank you. Um, uh, I love the model from the 50s to Avima. Right. Uh, and Funny Face, the movie with Audrey Hepburn. Mm -hmm. uh, Dita Bontis. Of course. Betty Page. Lady Miss Kier, uh, Terry Mugler, um, John Willie, the illustrator. This is John Willie's work. Who else? And Everyone. You, I mean, I get inspired from everywhere, right? And, and you just kind of brought this that. You, 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 right. It's everywhere. And have you been working for some major fashion houses? I know you've been modeling. She's been modeling. Here She's there. been modeling. Yes. But you buy hooks to my work here at the Beverly Center. I think there's a Prada store here, right? Is there a Prada? There is a Prada store. There is a Prada store, Prada store here. You might have seen me in the product store if you came here. 
And um, you did an ad campaign for them? I did. I was in an ad campaign last year for them. That's amazing. Amazing. See, see, drag influences fashion, and fashion influences drag. I think it's a very uh, two-way street. Um, since your uh, meteoric rise to fame, uh, Kim Chi, in season eight, um, how has your... Um, how does it feel to be a force in the industry, in the world of drag? Oh, I don't know about being a force and all that. It's a lot to take in. But I will say this, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's that marabou. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's that marabou. Get a hairball. Can we quote you? <laughs> Kim's allergic to retail. Now. I think I'm allergic to marabou sweater. And I'm just, like, finding out if my, like, neck is breaking out. Anyways. What was the question again? You're a force. How are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know if it's a force per se, but I would say um, I'm breaking. I'm, breaking what? No, no, I'm like making my way into like the beauty industry. You know, yeah, we all have our sure. thing. You know, Viola has their little fashion thing my going on. Fashion thing. No, I honestly, my... no, Kim, your pictures that you post of your face. I know they're highly face tuned, but damn. <laughs> they are. Oh, you want to talk about face tune? What? You want to talk about face tune? Um, no. I actually, a video clip of you face tuning your face. Oh, she does not this video. Really sick. Release it. <laughs> no, your beauty looks are incredible. Thank you. So is your way. She must muse, my mom. Oh, thank you. Anyways, back to the question. Okay. Um, it's an amazing feeling, and I'm happy to use my platform to further do things in the beauty industry. What was the most fun thing that you got to do during these last couple of years after being on the show? Um, so, Pat McGrath brought me to Paris, and I got to go to uh, Pat McGrath, an amazing makeup artist. I got to like witness all the um, icons in action, so that was probably the coolest thing I got to do as a makeup nerd. Right. I also saw Kim Kardashian backstage two hours before she got robbed. No. So you did it. <laughs> yeah. Were you implicated? Were you questioned? So you've had some really amazing, fun, once in a lifetime experience. Totally. Okay. All right, we're going to move on and talk to Ginger Minj, everybody. <laughs> now, I know that you, um, you, there might be a lot of people in the audience who are thinking about maybe doing drag, or maybe this is Hollywood, they wanted, they're here to chase their dream. I know that you came from a very small town in Florida. I did. And now look at you, you just, you just, I saw you did a movie with Jennifer Aniston. You have really conquered the world. What advice do you have for people that maybe come from a small town and have that big dream? How did you do it? Well, I think the most important thing to remember is you have to be authentic to yourself. You can't be anything that you think like, the world wants to see. I think that Violet is absolutely gorgeous and stunning and brilliant, but I could never be that. So, I'll never be glamour, mama. That's right. <laughs> so you've got to find what works for you, and you really sometimes it takes throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks, and then you got to run with it. And I don't like to run at all, but I decided no, to try it. So I, I think that as long as you are honest with yourself about your abilities and just kind of go forth with that, then you can conquer the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Season 8 winner. When you got to the show, um, I think that would be the most interesting thing. Like, people don't understand that experience of, like, actually making RuPaul's Drag Race and how stressful and crazy and chaotic it is. When you got there for Season 8, did you think you knew what you were doing and did you have any idea that you would wind up being the winner? Well, you know, I am, uh, if anything, probably overly confident. I think I can do a lot of stuff, even stuff I can't do. But um, I walked in thinking to myself, I just, I'm gonna win. And if I wouldn't, if I didn't think I was gonna win, I wouldn't have come to do it in the first place. Mm -hmm. but then I saw a lot of people doing things before my season. Like, I, I, could I be more different than Violet Joshki? I mean, Violet changed up the game. I, I also blame Violet for reveals because of episode one, season seven. Yeah. Violet. why butterflies are dead to me. <laughs> No, but you, you did start that. That was an iconic moment. It could be your iconic moment too, though. I know. We, you we, had a moment after I had my moment. We were memes together. together. <laughs> Wait, yes, but you that was. I used to look at that all the time. 
Well, and I do too, and I thank you for that. No, likewise. I, I, not how it happened, but I mean, as like a fellow Asians will know, we love our labels, we love our shopping. Right. And my mom is a very, very, very traditional Korean lady who loves shopping. So I live here in LA now as well. Okay, you do? Yeah. Wonderful. In Koreatown. In Koreatown, I know, plot twist. <laughs> Surprisingly, it was like the best deal that I could find. I found like a beautiful place in the city yeah. for yeah. fans are approving. The fans are approving. I love them. Koreans? Well, that's them too. too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to Ginger. And this is kind of that same thing, you know, about growing up in a small town and obviously not being probably like a lot of the other little kids. Did you ever see gay people represented on TV? And with that in mind, how does it feel that you're now a role model for people who watch the show and for kids all over the world? Well, for those of you who don't know, I was born and raised in Leesburg, Florida, which is like 45 minutes north of Orlando and 35 years behind it culturally. They threw a parade when they finally got their first McDonald's. Amazing. And, and they, like, this is legit. They actually did. Um, so, no, there. What the only gay representation that I had was when I would I would VHS record on my TV VCR combo. We are I for the straight guy. No. I That's crazy. And I would sneak into my bedroom and watch it at three o'clock in the morning with the quilt pulled all the way up over me and the TV because I was afraid that my father would find out. But it, it was people like you who wow. actually pulled me out of the closet. That was not a leading question, and I appreciate it. But it's true. Thank you. Um, and how does it feel? But now you're in those bedazzled shoes, and little kids from all over the world get to see you and say, hey, I can, I can be whatever I want to be. I can be fabulous and fierce. How does it feel to be that person now? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's daunting a lot of the time, but I think that it's a responsibility that I would never take lightly. Luckily, I was born with wide set shoulders so I can carry the weight of the world on them. Of um, you have been on a world tour as well. What are some of the most fun things you've gotten to do since your, since your uh, season triumph? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like the tours are, um, the, the best part about the tours is getting out with the other girls. Right. When you do shows by yourself, you're really just by yourself in a room uh, in the manager's office of a gay bar that they've converted into a dressing room for you. Right. Um, but some of the fun stuff I got to do, I, I'm, I'm on the new uh, Netflix show, Tales of the City. Um, so that was a really exciting uh, moment for me to get to act with like Laura Lenny and Olympia Dukakis and Helen Page and all these like, you know, Fortune Beams and all these like legendary iconic uh, people was really an amazing experience for us. So I've also got to do um, Angels in America at the, at the Berkeley Rep in, uh, in Berkeley, California. So that was also really getting to meet Tony Kushner and that was just a really wild ride for me. Right, right. So amazing opportunities that you never imagined. And I got to sit next to Ginger at the mall. This is crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Violet, I wanted to ask you because I feel like you were kind of a pioneer on your season and really a game changer in the world of drag. How do you see drag evolving from where it is now? Oh my god, I hate drag now. <laughs> I hate it. The reveals, back to the reveals, it's just too much. Yeah. And not enough. You know, it's like New York. It's crazy. I mean, I find myself like distancing myself mentally from drag. Uh -huh. It's crazy. It's changing for me, which is good. Well, I think, you know, it's... Okay, but you guys keep saying mall and mall like it's a bad thing, but I love the Beverly Center. Is this what it goes like yes. to <laughs> What are yes, some we made it. I mean, this is it, baby. Kim, what are some of your favorite um, stores here? Where, we, where, do you, where do you shop? Um, so, I don't know if it's on this floor, but there is like a boutique. Um, this, I forgot what the boutique was called, but also... It is here. Is it trash? It's here. No, they sell like, a lot of like black, loose, drapey clothing that I love. Oh, is I, it like cost or something? No, it's not cost. Okay. Um, we'll figure it out. I'll get you a map later. Yeah. But I'm glad that it's you like to shop It's somewhere over there on that vicinity. Okay. You like Gucci. You're a Gucci girl. I love Gucci. I love Prada. I love Louis Vuitton. I love Prada. Balenciaga. Which is all here at Beverly Center. <laughs> all right. If I could just plug my favorite, I'm really into Wetzel Pretzel. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Dog, with, the, dog. with the cheese on it. You put the wet in wet sauce, I believe. Bob loves designers too. 
Bob and I went. Do they have a Levi store here? They do? Yes, um, Levi's one. Right here, Beverly. The guy back there is waiting. No. Never mind. Um, fuck that. Um. Anyways, um, I was. Wow. Ginger, any thoughts? Well, I actually, I completely agree with you on that. And I would say that um, even though it's been 50 years and we have made a lot of progress, we're not done yet. So no, we, we are continue not. to march and do the things that we have to do to make sure that we are seen and heard. Absolutely. Kimchi? Um, I'm proud of all of us for getting the platform that we get, being able to make a difference in someone's life. Um, and speaking of that, soon I'm going to start a charity where people could submit their makeup and I will be donating makeup to kids in theater district and inner city schools so they have a chance to Amazing. bring their makeup. And, yeah, there's so much makeup and you guys have like a palette that you can use once or twice and never use again, right? So like let's send them up to the theater, our theater district and inner city school kids so they can become better makeup artists or become Good better... Good for you. Gay it forward. Yes. And Violet? I mean, for me, pride happens all year long. I mean, this is our jobs, this is our passion, this is our careers. So when Pride Month comes around, I think for me it's inspiring to see people that it's not a year-round thing. And it's, you know, it's the gay, the trans person's mother, and it's their time to come out and have a sign that I love my trans kid. And that's what affects me the most is when I see people that are not year-round pride, pride, gay. We, I mean, we live the life. I'm proud, I do pride shit all year round. So when I see people that it's not their day-to-day -day life kind of getting emotional and getting active and participating in the conversation is when I get emotional. I was the grand marshal for Atlanta Pride uh, in 2015 when I won Drag Race. And I'm usually kind of like, oh yeah, parade, day drag, morning, whatever. But when you see the mass of people, and you see the signs, and you see the mothers, that's what affects me emotionally. And I'm like sitting in this convertible crying in 2015, and that's kind of what affects me the most about Pride Week, is seeing people participate that don't usually, it was amazing. Stay tuned for parts two, three, and four to watch the performances by each of the former contestants from Drag Race who appeared on the panel with Carson.